Welcome to a new video. Before I get into talking about what this video is all about, see that? There, that, yeah, the box. Go and click it. You know you want to. Click that box and make sure you hit the little bell as well. And let's roll the intro. Zoom. Welcome to the video, racing again. Um, this time we're heading southwest from Edinburgh down the A702. Beautiful, beautiful uh, part of the country, down through Carlops, uh, West Linton, heading towards the services at Abington, where we pick up the M74, and then M74 down the west side of the country, um, past Carlisle, heading towards Lancaster. So tonight we are at Salty, Salty Balls, Salt tire, whatever you want to call it, uh, but yeah, we're at the salt the salt tire uh, race circuit, um, which is where the Lancaster Uni normally holds their stuff. Um, tonight we're racing the two three four, and yeah, we're a Cat Four. We're not, you know, yeah, we're a little bit off pace um, so far this year. Either that, or everyone else has jumped forward. Maybe we're on the pace. But everyone's jumped forward maybe because of this whole year that we've had in isolation and lockdown. But um, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, but yeah, today's video isn't necessarily about the racing. Unfortunately, the whole COVID thing means there's no, you know, I can't have anyone filming at the roadside. Obviously, British Cycling uh, forbids me from having a camera on the bike, so we can't do any race footage anymore um, for fear of getting a DQ. And I'm certainly not going to drive three hours just on the off chance that we can use the video. Um, so today's video is talking about, well, why is it, as a Cat 4, who's not necessarily pushing for anything, and certainly at my age there's no real intention other than having fun, why is it I'm going to drive three hours for a race which could potentially only last for 30 minutes? That's today's question. Why do we do what we do? miles left in the journey so about an hour and a half and uh, at this point in the journey it's a good point to actually ask and hopefully answer the question about this video why do I put myself in the car for this amount of time to do such a short race because certainly at this point in the journey I start to ask myself the same question I've been in the car for approaching an hour and a half already. Uh, admittedly, we didn't cover much ground because the A702, especially if you get caught behind traffic, there's nowhere to pass. So we didn't really cover much ground between Edinburgh and Abington services. Now, obviously, we're on the motorway. It's just a straight run. But that's quite a bit of time in the car already. We've had our pre-race fuel. So today, uh, to keep it super simple, it was four four sandwich thins, white obviously, because we want to keep the fibre down, we want to, uh, we want to, um, we want to digest that food as, as easily as possible, that's the reason why we also picked seedless jam, and then 500 mils of, of fruit juice, so super super simple, really easy carbs to digest, so we've already had that, all we've got to look forward to is the drive, um, and then 90 minutes pre, we've got sodium bicarb to have 
I'm not putting that under the category of looking forward to it because it's rancid. But yeah, as I say, at this point in the journey, that's when I start to question myself as to why you're doing this trip. And the thing is, there's no easy answer because there's lots of different answers or lots of different reasons. Is there enough races on in Scotland to mean that I don't need to do these trips? No, there isn't. That's the simple answer. The harder answer, or the harder question, why is there a lack of Scottish races? I heard one promoter say it's because there's a lack of riders. I don't believe that because, and I know that this year is difficult because of COVID and we haven't, in fact, we've only just had our first road race in Scotland. So we're missing all of them. So this year doesn't really, you know, doesn't really count. But if I go back a couple of years, any races that I signed up to or attempted to sign up to, whether that was a road race or a crit, was mostly, and especially road race, mostly oversubscribed. Now you cannot say that's because there's a lack of riders. And yes, there are riders who will come up from England, especially for some of the road races. Um, but yeah, you can't say it's because of a lack of riders. I am going through the process of looking into hosting my own crit races and speaking to Scottish Cycling. It's definitely not because there's a lack of commissioners either, because there's plenty. So that's certainly one of the answers. There isn't enough races being put on in Scotland at the present time to stop me from getting in the car and driving as much as, well, we drove down to Bath, didn't we? So that was a, that was a two day trip. So why else would I do this? Um, another reason is competition and fair competition and being able to push yourself because I don't know about you, but I find pinning a number on and getting stuck into a race, even if it means that you are blown right out the back pretty much as soon as you've started, which we've had this year. I find that a far tougher workout than trying to do the hardest of interval sessions, either indoors or just out on the road. Um, it's too easy I feel to bail on a training session. But when you put yourself through a three hour drive and pinned a number on your back and paid for petrol and paid for your race fuel and paid for the race actual entry, you're kind of loath to pull yourself out of that race too soon. Now admittedly, there comes a point where you can't actually push yourself any further whether that's because you've got bad legs or everyone else just has better legs. So there comes a point where you can't actually push and you know at the end of the day a workout's a workout. But I still feel that I'm able to push myself further if I'm in a race. If I'm losing that wheel, yes there's still that mental aspect of racing where you think ah, I've just not got it and you kind of ease off but of course if you push past that and really push and really dig, there's a chance you can get back on and keep yourself in the race. Now, on an interval, you're probably not gonna do that. And certainly, speaking personally, nah. If I'm not feeling it, then I'm not feeling it. I'm gonna back off and I'm gonna stop. So I also mentioned fair racing. And what I mean by that is, and don't get me wrong, Zwift, RGT, platforms like that, they're great, they're fantastic, but they're not racing. Don't get me wrong, racing on these platforms is great and it's hard, but it will never, it will never ever take away from racing outdoors. It's a completely different ball game where you, you're able to use your skill, your bike handling, how do you take a corner, at what, at what side of someone's wheel do you position yourself to get the most out of the draft? None of that comes into play when you're racing indoors. It's pretty much all 
to do with raw power. And unfortunately, because of that, people cheat. Whether they do it on purpose, or whether they just inadvertently don't have their power meter or their trainer set up properly, or they have the type of trainer which has sticky watts. You know, when you're racing against someone on Zwift and you get beaten, unfortunately, you don't know 100% is that person legit. And unfortunately, I have to admit, I've been drawn into this myself, there are so many people not quite accurate with what they should be doing or how they should be presenting themselves online that unfortunately you do question whether or not that person's legit, especially if you get well and truly royally battered. So what is it that's not fair about that? Well, I'll give you an example. I race against a, a local rider um, back, back in Edinburgh. And when we race together, we're in the same, we're in the same car, okay? But if we were to go on to Zwift, this guy's two cats higher than me, because currently, currently I'm back in the seas, um, just purely because I haven't raced on Zwift for so long. Admittedly, my first three races back, I've got two victories out of those three races, so it's not gonna be long until I go back up into the Bs. But this guy's an A-cat, but I can compete with him on the road. So, that's where fairer racing comes into it because at the end of the day you've got license points and you've got categories. Now, I know you've got categories on Zwift and you've got Catherine, well, you kind of got categories on other platforms, but the categories in British Cycling are all to do with your license points. The better you perform, the more points you earn, the more points you earn, you're able to upgrade yourself. Cat 4, Cat 3, Cat 2, Cat 1, Elite. But well, that brings us to the question of why would I drive three hours to join a Cat 2 race when I'm a Cat 4? And I guess that brings us to the only answer that there is other than the other ones I've already given. And that is, it's fun. Cycling, above all else, is a hobby. And of course you do hobbies to give yourself fun, enjoyment, pleasure, whatever. It just so happens that my hobby, there is an element of fitness in it, and of course, the older you get, the harder it is to, to uh, maintain that fitness, but the more you work at it, the healthier you feel, the healthier you feel, in theory, the longer you live. Um, but I'm not doing it for that. I do it for a bit of fitness, of course I do, but I also do it for the enjoyment, the fact that I can jump on a bike, pin a number on, ride as hard as I can, and potentially beat someone to the line. Now admittedly, and this is where one of the factors come into, you know, it's a bit crazy that I'm doing this. Racing, as with quite a few sports, inherently has some dangers. And of course, if I'm driving three hours on my own to a race, there is a potential that I could crash or someone could cause me to crash. I could injure myself and might not be able to drive home. Now, of course, worst case scenario, but you do have to consider that. Now I don't consider that pre-race, I will certainly take that on board during a race. I don't take any risks anymore. I'm too old, I'm too wily, I don't need to take risks. Well, I do need to take risks, to be fair, if I want to progress, if I want to do well. But I don't, you know, I've got enough sense in my head now that I don't need to take a risk. At the end of the day, I'm not competing for a contract with Ineos. I'm not, comp I'm not competing for anything other than to do well for myself. And I guess that's the answer. I want to do well for myself and I want to have fun while I'm doing it. If I happen to get a place in and I get some points, great. That kind of makes it worthwhile spending all this money and this time traveling up and down the motorways. But if that doesn't happen, I'm still gonna have fun doing the race.
So all in all, tonight's race was gash. Um, it's a good, it's a good example of, of why do I do this. So three hour, three hour trip down, three hour trip back, and to come away with absolutely nothing. In fact, my race was over within ten minutes. Um, on the drive down here, some GI issues. Not saying that's the problem, but it's certainly not going to help because I, I don't feel great. Uh, slight bit of a head cold that I woke up with this morning. Yeah, again, not really, not really an excuse, but it means I don't feel very good. So, yeah, um, organisation very, very late in getting the sign on ready. So my my warm up routine that I like to take quite a while getting sorted and organised was was all rushed, and I hate doing that. In fact, I didn't even do the full 20 minutes. I only did about 15, and you know, rushed to the rushed to the line. The upshot of that is, I was on the front grid. Now, Salty is quite a quite a narrow track, so only three across on the grid, two meters apart, and uh, daylight in between the wheels. Um, because of that, and everyone's meant to have been doing this everyone because we're all following the same uh, British cycling guidelines but this is the only one who's actually done a proper neutralised lap so the commissaire said right you three in the front you're in charge you set the pace for the first lap make sure everyone's all grouped up then I'll blow the whistle and then the race is on and I'll start your timer um, so yeah on the front of the grid um, rolled around nice and easy whistle went pushed on why I pushed on I don't know. Why on earth did I go to the front for a lap? I don't know. I don't know why I did that. Um, anyway, the young guns, and we're talking, you know, be lucky if these boys are that that much out of juniors. Uh, Cat twos took off. I tried to go with. No chance. Uh, just slowly went further and further and further back until eventually I popped and I was right off the back. I sat up and just cruised. And I cruised for a couple of laps and then the commissaire was like, just join in when they lap you. Fair enough. So I joined in when they lapped me and uh, pushed on and pushed on and then eventually I popped a second time and then I sat up a little bit and then I pushed on because someone else who uh, was dropped off the back I was trying to catch up to. Unfortunately, I caught up to them just as the group lapped me. So he jumped on the back of them, which meant that I had to try and push really hard to jump on and stick on his wheel. And I did until the end. And then obviously, lap went, the, the final bell went, they went for the sprint. I sat up because obviously, you know, you've been lapped, so you've got absolutely nothing to do with the race, you're not allowed to get involved. And, um, yeah, that was it. So a six hour drive for absolutely nothing. But it takes me back to why did I do this? Now, okay, yes, admittedly, right now I feel like, why the f did I do this? Absolutely wasting my time today. But it's because my body's not feeling very good. You can probably hear it in my voice. My throat doesn't feel very good. My stomach doesn't feel very good. My head doesn't feel very good. But that said, it's still fun to get out on your bike in the sunshine and race. Now, admittedly, there wasn't any racing tonight. I was essentially just time trialling. Um, but I do get this wonderful scenery driving back through the Yorkshire Dales. We've just passed the Sap. Or the Shat, is it Shat? Sap Summit. Somewhere up here. 1,036 1, metres. So there's a cracking view up here over the Yorkshire Dales. And it's sunny. And because the football's on, the M6 is quiet. So it's an easy drive home. Thank you.